Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and a few days ago I tweeted a couple of photos I'd taken using the Pixel 4 in my back garden. And loads of you asked me if I would make a video about it. So here we are, and if you do enjoy this video then it'd be amazing if you could hit that subscribe button and ding that little notification bell so you're one of the first to see my next video. So I want to show you how the Pixel 4's astrophotography mode works, see how it compares to the iPhone 11 Pro and Huawei Mate 30 Pro, which have two of the best night mode cameras out there. And then I've asked my friend Ashley, who's a professional photographer and just all round space nerd, what she thinks of the photos, how we can edit them, and also to give a few beginners tips. This is the setup. It's just a tripod with essentially three car phone mounts attached to it, so I can get the phone side by side. That's it, no extra equipment, lenses, or any other funny business. Let's start with the Pixel, and all you have to do is open the camera app and go to night sight mode. Then if it's dark enough and stable enough, you can't do this handheld, it automatically goes into astrophotography mode. Then simply tap the shutter button and wait for up to four minutes. So yeah, you'll need to be patient for this as it takes 16 different 15 second long exposures. But the end result is stunning. The Pixel is the only phone with a dedicated astro mode, but on the iPhone, when it detects you in low light, it'll automatically turn on night mode, which is usually a five second long exposure. But since we've got it on a tripod here and I want to get the best out of it, I'm manually adjusting it to the maximum long exposure, which seems to be between 28 and 30 seconds. And this is the result. Finally, on the Huawei Mate 30 Pro, which right now is only available in China, but I still wanted to see what it could do. In night mode, it can take up to a one minute long exposure. The results do look pretty good, although sometimes you can actually see the outline of the lens in the photo, which isn't ideal. Also, just look at the difference between taking a regular photo on the Mate 30 Pro, which takes about two seconds, versus the 50 second long exposure shot. I couldn't quite believe it, but in some cases, I found the basic photo to be better than the night mode. So here are a few examples side by side with all the phones using their respective night modes and the Pixel's astro mode. No edits, no filters, this is straight out of the camera on all of them. They're all pretty good, but the Pixel is definitely the best, which I guess you'd expect given that it does have a dedicated mode for this type of photography. Now this is the difference between a photo using the Pixel 4's standard night sight mode, which you can do handheld and takes about four seconds, versus the four minute astro mode on a tripod. You don't have to use a tripod, you can always just prop the phone up against something or even set a timer and then place it on the floor with the camera pointing up or then even get in the photo yourself if you're happy to sit still and count up to four minutes. I'm sure you'll agree this is impressive stuff. But while these photos straight out of the camera do look good, a little bit of editing can make them look amazing. So I sent a few of my shots over to my friend who knows way more about astrophotography than I do. I mean, she's taken these photos herself using higher end professional camera setups but I want to see what she makes of the Pixel's photos and how we can make them look even better. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm a photographer out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I am a commercial photographer with a focus on food, but I also love weddings, but I'm extremely passionate about astrophotography. And immediately the Pixel 4's images stood out right off the bat. So typically when you're taking astrophotography photos, you're using a long exposure. And if you don't have a motorized tracker on your tripod, you're gonna to start to see star trails in your photos if you do any longer exposures than say 25 seconds or 30. So what I was really impressed with right off the bat is the Pixel's ability to eliminate the star trails and the lack of noise in the photos. That's typically something that photographers will do in Photoshop or they'll buy software specifically for, but the Google Pixel 4 is immediately stacking these photos with multiple exposures on top of each other. And what that'll do is reduce the noise and reduce the star trailing in the photos. So very impressed with the Pixel 4, but there are a few ways that you can take these photos to the next level using just a couple tricks in Lightroom or Photoshop. So we're gonna make this super quick. There's a lot of scientific ways that you can edit astrophotography photos, but for this example, we really just wanna bring out the definition of the stars. So the first thing is to change the white balance, up the contrast, bring up your whites. That's really gonna help bring out some of the lightness in the stars. Push the clarity just a little further. Now the curves are super important, so I definitely wanna increase the lights here and bring down the darks. That seems kind of obvious decrease the shadows and already we can start to see a little bit more definition in this photo. I'm going to skip down here to sharpening and noise reduction. Like I mentioned, I was really impressed with the lack of noise in the photo and the sharpness of the stars without any star trails. So I really think these are minimal. So we'll skip over those guys. Now, one thing you will need to do with these photos is adjust the vignetting. There's a lot of vignetting around here due to the lens, but we can edit that just a little bit like this. 
And if you push it too far, you'll start to see the imperfections down here, but we wanna make sure that it's better, but not pushed over the edge. And we can get a little bit more into the actual photo by cropping it. So let's go ahead and crop it just a little bit. That'll also help with the vignetting. And then I wanna adjust the light white balance just a little bit more, bring out a little bit more color. This is all subjective. And there you have it, before and after. There's a lot of ways to make your photos stand out from the others, but there's definitely a couple fundamental tips that I would love to share with you guys to make your photos even better. The number one being location, location, location. The Milky Way is not gonna peak everywhere, but the biggest thing you need to worry about is light pollution. I would recommend you guys use, pick your location using a light pollution map. You can find these all over the internet if you Google things like dark sky finder or a light pollution map. And what you're looking for is the Bortle scale. So the Bortle scale is basically a scale from nine down to zero on how dark the skies are. And to get these truly beautiful astrophotography photos with true definition in the Milky Way and the stars, you really wanna go stay under class four or lower. But in addition, you also wanna pick time of year. So we all know that the moon has phases, so picking a lower moon scale, such as the new moon, or even just waxing or waning 20% uh, or less is a great idea. The Milky Way peaks from March to October in the Northern Hemisphere. So if you're in the States or if you're in London, you're gonna wanna do it between March and October with the best time being in the summer months, July, June, August. Those are great times. The Milky Way is gonna be lined up and down. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, middle to end of October through the beginning of March. So just the opposite of the Northern Hemisphere. And the third thing is composition. As we showed you with the pictures before, it's really great to have something in the frame that kind of helps define the night sky a really good contrast. Other than that, um, things like buildings or mountains or a tree, anything really to kind of put up against the night sky so that you can see the contrast of the Milky Way along with something else interesting in the frame so that your eyes just have something else to look at. Would love to answer any of your questions. You can follow me at, at Ashley Lester Photo. Thanks so much, Tom. A big thanks to Ashley for those tips and I'll leave a link to her Instagram in the description, which I definitely recommend checking out. The Pixel 4 is far from perfect, especially when it comes to things like battery life, but there's no other phone right now that can take photos like this. Granted, it's not the most practical, and I think for a lot of people it could be a try it once and then never again type of gimmicky feature, but personally, I love it, and it's been so much fun learning more about astrophotography and sharing the photos I've taken literally from my back garden with a phone. It's insane. But what do you think of it? Are you impressed or do you think it's all just a bit of a gimmick? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys. Do hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and want to see more from me. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.